All right. Well, I'm standing in what I believe is an old test pit. Um, I think they started to cut into the mountain over here. I'm maybe 150 yards away from, from the main part of the quarry. And uh, yeah, I mean, they were working here. It's very evident that they were working here. They created a bunch of blocks, but it doesn't seem like they hauled much away. So I wonder if they were cutting in just to get a sense of what the, uh, you know, what the material like was over here before they set up equipment, you know, new derricks or whatever. Um, so I think this, I think this location would be pretty ideal for a uh, little cabin. Um, it doesn't afford the same view that the, that the landing does, but I need to work in the landing. There's just not the space up there. Um, I have this notion of, of uh, a little hobbit-esque house, something that's really hunkered down into the hill. And this test pit provides that natural bench, you know, in which to, to place, place a little cabin. I'll show, you know, I'll show you some pictures of, of the terrain around me in the immediate area. There's a lot of debris, a lot of blocks here that need to be, uh, you know, pulled out. Um, but I think you can get a sense of the height of this wall behind me. I'm, you know, 5'10", and, uh, you know, I'd say the top of this bench is seven or eight feet. And, um, so if I were to move all the blocks out of here, dig down until I'm on ledge, which could be six inches, could be three feet. There's, you know, there's no way for me to know without getting into it. Then, uh, and then I can come back up, you know, using the same material that I pulled out, I could create a foundation, come back up to a uh, target floor height, and uh, yeah, start from there. For my cabin, I have a few criteria. I would like it to be unimposing on the landscape, just really hunkered down, while also kind of feeling cavernous inside. I want, I want a structure that really, you know, once you get in there, just draws you in. I want it to have a massive fireplace, four or five foot tall Rumford style fireplace. And I want a little sleeping loft. I think a little loft would be, uh, you know, it'd be nice, be nice and warm up there, but it would also minimize the footprint. I want, I want the structure to be absolutely as small as possible. So those are my personal criteria. And I guess the purpose of this video is to kind of go fishing for other criteria. What, um, you know, what you would do if, if you had an inexhaustible supply of granite. Um, and uh, yeah, you wanted a little Thorovian type, type cabin. So I guess we'll, we'll uh, walk around a little bit and see, you know, try to get a sense of the, the terrain here, the landscape here, you know, how I might develop it for this cabin. And then we'll head into town and, and look at some masonry structures there that, that have a few uh, design cues that, that I'd probably draw off of. And, you know, it'd be worth, um, you know, demonstrating some historic stone cutting practices as well. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm down on the road. Um, maybe uh, 50 yards down the road from where that, that landing is. And you can see, well, maybe you can't, I don't know. There's the slightest suggestion of a road that was cut up on the side of the bank there. It, uh, it goes up to a little, little terrace of sorts. And I'm thinking that could be a little parking area. It would have to be for a small car. Like my, I don't think I could get my truck spun around in there, but uh, yeah, it's a nice little uh, parking area, staging area. And then it'd have to be a short little footpath that runs up to the cabin itself, which would be right up there. 
the leaves on the trees and on the ground obscure all the terrain, make it really hard to see, to demonstrate what's going on. And I could cut in a little trail right here, um, you know, to get the excavator up there to, to build the structure. And then I'd probably clean up the trail afterwards, try to restore it back, you know, minus the stones that I use or sell. Um, maybe this could be a footpath down. Okay, I'm in town now. I'm sitting next to the uh, St. Johnsbury Athenaeum. It's a library, public library, built by the Fairbanks family. They're industrialists in the, uh, in the area in the 19th century. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful building right here. Um, so let's, let's take a quick look and I'll see, uh, I'll show you what I like about it. Big beautiful brick building, bunch of nice little details, has the mansard roof. But what we're, what we're here to look at today is the uh, granite base, you know, this foundation. Um, obviously stones laid all coursed out has these beautiful arches that go over the the basement windows there but one detail that's really attractive to me and something that i would like to incorporate into the cabin is the edge treatment to all of these stones You can see here, you know, the, the perimeter of every stone has like a one inch, roughly a one inch border around it. And what those are called are marginal drafts. And the effect is that um, it takes an otherwise irregular stone and creates a plane. You know, if you, it planes out the perimeter so you can lay up the, you know, you can lay up the stone into a structure and use those drafts um, yeah, as a reference. So that way you can have a, a plum, a plum structure. Now that's something I would like to incorporate. Although unfortunately it's such a time consuming uh, process to do by hand that I just don't think it's in the cards for me to um, to cut every stone. So what I would probably do is have, you know, marginal drafts just on the corners, you know, uh, the corners of the building and around doors and windows and such. But otherwise I could just, you know, I can establish that, I can establish the plane just by, by rock facing each stone. Um, another detail that I appreciate about this is uh you know the occasional stone you can still find a drill mark on the face so it looks like you know they would have cut the block a little long and then pitched off the face however not every stone got that you know they, they weren't able to hide that detail with every stone you know that that piece right there is a good example You know, I also like how, how the, the material is coursed out. You know, not every application is good for that. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll do something like build the exterior with coursed stone and the interior with a different pattern. You know, maybe go back and revisit that ashlar pattern. Maybe, I'll, you know, build the base up to the, the first level, um, build that with uh you know a different style i don't know this is a beautiful building and uh you know it's fun to look at it with you know with a granite 
worker's perspective. 1871, I guess. I think one of the finer pieces of architecture here in St. Johnsbury. Now we're going to go down and look at the uh, museum. That's another phenomenal piece. So I didn't realize that the museum was uh, under construction. Um, I knew that they're embarking on a big, uh, big project, but evidently they've started. It's going to be hard for me to show you what I wanted to show you. However, I did find uh, some interesting pieces of curbing here. A couple blocks they pulled out. Got drill marks on the bottom. This was a presumably exposed face. And then that rounded, you know, bull nosed, bull nosed top. This goes, uh, you know, all the way around the perimeter of this, this lot. Who knows where that granite came from? Perhaps from Blue Mountain. It's hard saying. So the museum is a beautiful brownstone piece. It's the Fairbanks Museum, built again by the Fairbanks family. Yeah, this construction really is making it hard for me to show you what I want to show. But I mean, it's just, it's just an absolute beautiful piece. Pretty sure this would be uh, Portland Brownstone. I, I'm just speculating here. I'm not stating this as fact, but I believe that this material was quarried in uh, Connecticut and moved up. Let me see if I can find a good, a good wall. So. What I wanted to talk about here was the pattern of the stone that, you know, that th this was laid up. You know what? I'm crossing this line. I don't even, I don't even care. So I think this is a textbook example of Ashler masonry and, uh, you know, rectangular pieces. If you look throughout the vertical joint, which is called the head joint, is broken at the top of every single stone. There are no, there are no examples of a, uh, a vertical joint running past two stones. Well, I mean, I did find one tiny one, but uh, we, won't, we won't talk about that. Then additionally, Every bed joint, the, the horizontal joint, doesn't seem to run more than three stones. Oh, and you know, here's an example too. You know, this basement level is, is all coursed out, it stands a little bit prouder of the rest of the, the structure, and then it goes up into that ashlar veneer pattern. Um, most of the veneer I do, you know, I, I end up doing in this Ashler fashion. It's just, I like it, you know, it looks really good. And this is really, truly an I iconic piece of architecture here in St. Johnsbury. Up on that tower somewhere, I believe on the back side, you know, there's a gargoyle, but in a, uh, it's carved into some type of comedic fashion. I don't think it's visible from the ground here. So while I would like my cabin to be a rustic cabin in the woods, I would like to incorporate some pieces of uh, you know, architectural refinement you know, a portion of it I would like to have 
in this coursed out block. A portion of it I'd like to lay up in the ashlar style. You know, additionally, the uh, you know that fireplace job, the uh, you know that veneer panel that I made, I laid up in this ashlar style. So this is like this is the quintessential example of that style of masonry. I guess actually what they're gonna do, it's gonna be a, a rather contemporary addition that's uh, going on to the back of this building. And there's quite a bit of public backlash about that. However, you know, this, this building style here kind of tells a tells a uh, you know a testament to, to their time and the addition that'll go on to the back will be a testament to our time. But hey look at this thing that I just noticed. Right on the corner there there's a like a target, reflective target put on. And I'll be interested to know what that's uh, what that's about. I wonder if they use that just as a reference for the new construction or if that's there to monitor movement of the, of the building itself because you know it looks like they're working on the foundation putting in a bigger footer underneath there I don't know see that list historical restoration trailer maybe I'll look those guys up see if they can give me a tour of this so a while back there at the Athenaeum, I, uh, I mentioned, yeah, pointed out the marginal drafts there and commented that it's such a time-consuming process that I don't think I'd be able to do the entire, the entire cottage in that fashion. And instead I would just, you know, plane out, pitch the faces off of each stone. So you can really see that here. You know, like, like the bottom sides of these stones here are kind of scalloped and uh, you know that that's that's exactly what they did you know they pitched off the faces to create you know to create a flat plane to use as a reference and that's how they built a nice plum wall so that's what I'm thinking on this cabin. Uh, you know, going through the design process is, 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 you know, usually pretty fun for me. I've kind of itemized what I would have in my uh, dream Thorovian cabin. Um, you know, not imposing while being cavernous and a massive fireplace and just a good place to go be comfy and warm. I'd be really curious to see what, uh, to hear what you guys might include. Any suggestions you might have. And, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hopefully we can turn this into something and uh, take care.